Foundation. This is not commission. Um, we uh, hold the third edition of what we call Yoruba Historical Conversation. We've had the honor privilege of hosting Professor Bonale Aware for the first edition and Professor Sedinso Badia Kitoe the second edition last month. And um, this month we brought no less, I will, well, I will mention the name now, uh, my colleague will be doing that later. But I can assure you that um, the, for the next one and a half, two hours that you will spend with us, you will go back and reach. Um, why did we start what we call your advice of the conversation? Um, I thought one of our pillars is to make sure that we preserve our culture, we, we make sure that um, our language, our history is preserved. And we, over the years, over the last um, 20 years, we realized that um, history is no longer being taught in schools. We realized that um, we were bringing up a generation of children who knew next to nothing about who they are, or where they came from, or what they were in the past. So it's not uncommon to um, find Yoruba youth also agree with um, any time the Yoruba says, oh, Yoruba is a cow, as an example. And you find that the, the Yoruba youth will agree, oh, yes, our widow fights. It's because they don't know their history. But the most serious note, we felt that we needed to bring back our history. We needed to get our people interested. And what we said uh, our younger ones, even the older ones no longer understood what to be a Yoruba man or woman. And we felt that at dawn, let us contribute our own quota. Let us start that conversation again. Let us bring in those who are knowledgeable in our history, those who went to school to study our history, those who are custodians of our history. That on a monthly basis, we'll bring them to this office to speak to us, to lecture us on any particular aspects of Yoruba history. Um, and so we are grateful that when we reach out to these scholars, they listen to us and they accept our invitation to come and interact with us, to come and tell us who we were in the past and who we are now and what we should be. Um, as I said, our history has suffered. We are now at a time where it is foreigners that are writing our history. Uh, you'll be surprised that some of the, if, you, if you're looking for some archival materials and you want to do certain things about our history, you might have to travel to Europe or America to find out. The other day I was speaking to a lecturer in UI who told me that um, of one of the foremost experts on the history of Ashoki the German lady and <laughs> I'm sure you don't know where I should okay, Germany, but we are an expert uh, that we have to go to Germany to speak to the lady. It's because um, we don't uh, we neglected our past and there's no way you neglect your past and be able to have a future. I believe that one of the challenges we face, particularly as a country, is because we refuse to acknowledge our past or we are we are living in denial. We don't want to we don't want to, I mean, we were told that, I didn't know when it was crap, but we were told it was crap about 20 years ago that don't teach history in the schools. Anyway, just yesterday, um, the Minister of Education said, oh, you can now teach history all over again, which I think um, it's a very good step. I, I, tweet, I sent a tweet, I said, well, the age of reason is finally returning. Once again, what we're doing here, it's not just an academic exercise, it's an exercise to connect our past to our present and our future. I can assure you that uh, you will have a good time. Um, the last, in going by what we've uh, experienced in the last two editions, I'm very sure that you will leave here again feeling more educated, knowing more about ourselves. Just before I hand over the microphone to my colleague who will introduce the guest speaker to us, Briefly, what is DOM Commission? As I said, it is a development agenda for Western Nigeria. We are three years and a few months here. 
it was uh, conceived by the idea of uh, regional integration. The commission itself was conceived not three years ago, but the commission was born three years ago. Earlier than three years ago, maybe five years ago, some agents came together and started talking about the future of the region. Uh, we felt that, uh, yes, we've been fragmented, put into states, but looking at our history, we realized that we made greater progress when we were working together as a single region. If you look at some of the monuments, some of the, some of the monuments around the western region today, about, around southwest, is when we have a single region. Now, we are not advocating for a single region, but we felt that we will be stronger if we can work together. In labor's time, I was born from the idea of dawn. Our duty is to midwife the integration process. Integration does not mean we will no longer have states. States are come to stay, but those states can work together. There is a greater strength in working together. The simple analogy is the broom. Uh, this, this has nothing to do with political party. Take out a stick of broom, you can't sweep, but bunch them together, they are stronger. That's a simple analogy. What we do here is, has nothing to do with politics. We are not a political organization, but we are a development commission. Every aspect of the I can think of. Uh, my writer general will always tell you that this is the only place where when we go out in the morning, we are going to walk on your virus. The only thing we do, the only thing we think about is the progress of your virus, progress of Southwest region. We do acknowledge that in the Southwest region, it's not just your that are living in it. It's not a socialist agenda, it's not a separatist agenda. It is the development of my gender. We've had people who talk to us, that, oh, you guys want to break your will. Well, it has nothing to do with us. This is purely development. We want to make sure that you and I leave a better future for our children and our grandchildren. Yes, things are, things are, you can argue that things are okay or things are improving, but they can be far better. If I argue that, I don't know, you might not agree with me on this, but I still believe that our development as a region stopped with the 1966. Now you might argue that our has states as it brought real development. That's the question. Today I just believe that we have more bureaucracies. Over the all government from a house over there, as far as from Yaba to Asala, before the Midwest region was created. Today, that's about eight states, eight governors, numerous commissioners, house of assemblies, as it translated to real development. Anyway, we are here as a commission to midwife development in our states. And please feel free to ask questions about your world well energy grow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, or thank you for coming and experiencing your past conversation with us. We hope today as well that you get a lot of take homes you know, that will hopefully impact on our future by doing our, our past. I get nervous every time I have to come. Okay, but today I'm, I think I'm a lot more nervous than last time I was When the um, guest speaker came in and sat beside me, he was so sure that he had seen me before. And he gave two scenarios. He said, Is it possible that we've had an intellectual engagement before? <laughs> I thought he was intellectual. Then again, he said, Maybe we met at a party in Lagos. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting closer. But then again, I was sure I was sure that I had never met him before. So and I'm sure while he's still sitting there, he's still thinking that I know this place from somewhere. I can only hope that when he finally remembers, it's not that he has seen me maybe when I was being mischievous. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
Professor Shino Oyeweso was born on the 1st of February 1961 at the Kara, Oyo State, into a Muslim family. The Oyewesos, however, came from Ede in Oshu State. He studied history at the prestigious University of Ife between 1978 and 1982, now Obafemi Alwan University. He later obtained a master's degree and a PhD in intellectual history from the same university. Professor Oyeweso joined the services of the Lagos State University as an assistant lecturer in October 1985 and rose to the rank of professor in 2004. He is a recipient of several national and international awards and research grants and clearly and unquestionably a leading authority on Nigerian history and politics, religion and culture as evident in his numerous publications since 1986. Professor Oyeweso is a highly valued member of the academia with a very profound understanding of university administration spanning roughly three decades. As an administrator, he served the Lagos State University in various capacities. He was at various times director, Center for General Studies, the head, Department of History and International Studies, deputy director, Internal Operations of the Lagos State University School of Part-Time Studies, Senate representative on the board of Postgraduate School, Chairman, Curriculum Committee and Business Committee of the Senate, and Dean, Faculty of Arts. From 1992 to 2005, he was a member of the 4th, 5th, and 6th Government Councils of the Lagos State University, ably led by Ashwin J. K. Ranu, Professor D.G. Femi Pierce, and Mr. Aki Kikiri Ekun, respectively. Professor Oyeweso has extensive knowledge of the Oshu State University, having served in various official capacities. He was the pioneer provost of the College of Humanities and Culture, Kiri Campus. He is also a fellow of the Historical Society of Nigeria and a member of the Nigerian Academy of Letters. Professor Oyeweso is a renowned specialist in the area of Nigerian history and politics. Some of his publications include Perspectives on the Nigerian Civil War, 1992, Eminent Yoruba Muslims, 2001, Struggle for National Liberation and Social Justice 2003 and an impressive number of others in local and international journals. Besides, he served as editor and editor-in-chief to a number of journals, including the Nigeria Journal of History and International Studies, Nigeria Journal of Humanities, and the Nigerian Historical Review. His method of in historical inquiry goes beyond the general question of why. He extends the inquest into what happened in the past, why it happened, and how it happened, not just through a systematic collision of beliefs and practices, but also through critical, inter- and transdisciplinary analysis of other sources and branches of knowledge that are capable of serving historical ends. Among the works of Professor Oyeweso on pre-colonial wars is the Eder Ibadan relations in the 19th century which is acclaimed as a systematic study of how universities interacted and survived through war and diplomacy. He has also examined several Yoruba war heroes in the studies of warfare in Yoruba land, such as Timi Abiku, Lakun Chu of Ede, Basho Udi Oye of Ibarra, and Balo Kutuku of Ijebu, through whose career he gave an analysis of the relationship between the regional class and political class and between economics and politics. Professor Oyewaso's academic exertions in the Rapid Criminal War Studies also found expression in the chapter he co-authored with Onasiki Oshin on the British Inquest and Administration of the Rubala, 1854 to 1900. Today, there is no controverting the fact that Professor Oyewaso is one of the most influential contemporary historians of modern Nigeria. The testimonies of his enthusiasm for scholarship are adequately reflected in his contribution to books, journals, monographs, newspaper articles, and conference proceedings. He is a versatile and accomplished scholar. His scholarly energies are particularly devoted to the studies of war, military, philosophy of history, Yoruba culture and history, Islamic studies, citizenship, development, and identity questions, and political thoughts in which his authority is well acknowledged. Professor Oyewaso's genius and versatility is also observed in micro studies of peoples of Ede, Ekwe, Ibadan, 
Badawi Ijesha and Lagos. That the prop is a leading expert in the field of strategic thoughts in Nigeria and to state the obvious. A testimony of this will be found in several volumes of scholarly literature he has produced on pre colonial and post colonial warfare in Nigeria. Those privileged to have encountered him describe him as a man of many sides. A man of many sides. In the accounts one, a highly cerebral historian, a politician by excellence, a diplomat, a diplomat of repute, a prolific writer, an admirable administrator, a man with a mild touch, an academic, an icon, and an individual who is ever down to earth. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with a deep sense of honor and that of an enthusiastic learner as I present our other speaker, one who has a very exotic name, which I hope you will tell us the meaning, <laughs> to this third edition of the Yoruba Historical Conversations. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Professor Shinyo Uyueso. Urbanism is a great race. 
a great national team. We have reported exceptional achievements in the past. And maybe we are making some progress today. So once again, I wish to drop my hat or my cap, so to say. For these men and women of vision who in the past three years have been laboring to make the success of this commission. Um, let me start by saying that I'm a Yoruba man. I was born in Ibadan, yeah. that is the heart of Ibadan. Omaku, Ikadiono. As a young boy, then, Ulul was my favorite. Uh, then, I followed Ulul to the nook and crannies of Ibadan. Then, and Eshu, too. I was also very, very close to Eshu. Ubadan was a peaceful society, but it was an emerging time then. Started my primary school at Elekoro, West Elekoro. Eventually, my parents relocated to Shekona. Shekona is a little village along. And the road. That's where I had my primary school for six good years. We were taught by the best teachers and best parents of the time. They took exceptional care of us. In our days, we sat for competitive entrance examination for secondary school. I applied to the Dua College, applied to Loyola College at that time, and Okiraguchi Grammar School. Because I chose to go to secondary school, it was the first of our admission that I accepted. Loyola came to the college came later. But I spent only one year in modern school because I had a great mentor. That mentor today is no other person than Professor Shola Akinyadi, first class historian, former Vice Chancellor of Shun State University, and the man who recorded phenomenal success, not only in his own academic career, but also as a university administrator. I told my parents, because we live very close to each other, in Shekhan Aten, that the school that the Akinyadis were attending, that would be the school that we also attend. And until they supported me, I don't allow my parents to rest. Eventually, okay, that would be grammar school then was known for three things. Soccer excellence, academic excellence, and cosmopolitanism. Because the entrance examinations then were conducted in Asaba, Fota Court, Kaduna, Mina. So we had, even by the time I was graduating, I was a lively prefect. But my head boy was that Asabu, and our sabo. My head gate was Comfort Eni, I mean Sevia Eni from Obubura, Obubura Division, Cross River State. The food prefect was Sevia, I mean Comfort, the younger sister. The games captain for the for the school, for the ladies, was Dorothy Epitu. So we had a pan engineering orientation, pan engineering secondary school at a stage in our evolution of uh, in the scholarly development of our education, something got wrong. 
we changed the policy. Automatic promotion. Um, you must attend school within your local environment. So, how we got to where we are today in terms of education, in the course of lecture, we will get there. 1978, I graduated with the first class, I mean, uh, 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 upper, I mean, it's not first class that we call it then. I was the best graduating student in my secondary school, uh, Division 1, the Division 1 distinction. I am grateful to my teachers who knew then that I was weak in mathematics. I wanted to be a medical doctor. I did physics, chemistry, biology, and Greek science, enrolled for nine or ten subjects. So one Mr. Oladoshu, later on, he had a, 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 became a renowned broadcaster. I don't know where he is now. He was the person who convinced my school principal that look, you are going to lose your best student if this boy should fail mathematics. We will head up in Division 3. So they now invited me to the principal office, removed uh, our Greek science, removed physics that look weight. Uh, physics can be, I mean, uh, in some industry, that weight, your performance, if you pass in physics, chemistry, and biology, you can study our Greek science or study medicine. But let's try to experiment with this. Eventually, I appreciate in uh, mathematics. I was offered admission. I have A in history, other art subjects, C4 chemistry, C4 physics, and all the rest of it. But my best subject eventually was the arts. And that's how I got enrolled at the University of Ife. I will stop my personal history at that level. It's I'm grateful for today because it gives me the opportunity to salute the teachers who taught us. Because that is part of history. My teacher at secondary school, who gave me the greatest inspiration, is now a blessed memory, is Mr. Kunle Oyemi. Uh, Mr. Kunle Oyemi was the best teacher I had, who mentored me as uh, first and foremost, a newspaper vendor, a timekeeper, and expert in time management. When I go to the university, I was added over to Professor Isaac Adiago Akijomi of Blessed Memory. My beginning in Historical research started with him. He was my teacher. The title of his work, major publication, War and Peace in Yorubana. I want to salute the insight and the foresight of the men of the Dawn Commission for bringing Professor Bonaliawe as a first. Speaker here. Professor Bonalia went pioneered war studies, Yoruba war studies in Nigeria. The title of our project, a PhD, I mean, of our thesis, a PhD, was The Rise of Ibadan as a Yoruba Power, submitted to the University of London in 1964. That of the next person. That's Professor Angie Akintoyi, Ekiti Karapo, and Kili Jiwo, submitted to the University of Ibadan in 1966. He later republished that work, Revolution and Power Politics in Yoruba. Late Professor Ade Ajayi co authored Yoruba Warfare in the 19th century with Harris Smith, Akinchogmi built on the works, particularly from Ife perspective. 
and if uh, the credo of your is war and peace in Yoruba land. Last week, you had uh, September 30, uh, 2016, uh, we celebrated 130th anniversary of the end of Kirichi War. In 1986, Professor Akijobu coordinated a similar platform, but on a wider level. All Yoruba of us, intellectuals, far and wide, assembled at University of Italy. That's 1986, when we had centenary celebration of the end of 30 years in town last week. You also organized a similar forum. So that's thanking you for your foresight. I'm big because you are building on the, the legacies of the, our predecessors in this way. In subsequent years, Professor Tony Fanola, a phenomenal scholar, built on the work of all these ancestors. The political economy of Ibadan, history of Ibadan, up to 1980, and more than any other scholar today, he has a rich body of uh, literature on Ibadan, and eventually he has been honored by Ogulu Ibadan with the chief the title of uh, Babiton, also of Ibadan. That Ogulu missing also retired from the University of Ibadan. His own publications on Yoruba war heroes remain similar. But when you are looking for easy materials to read on Yoruba issue and Yoruba warfare today, the best companion will be two. One is late, one is still very active. But who retired is not tired. That's uh, 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 Joseph Atoda, late, that's the author of the name of your empire and history of the Yoruba. It's a popular edition. And our own man, my teacher that I never met in the university, that I've read a lot about him, that's Professor Stephen Banji Akintoye. He left, he left in 1977. I and was admitted to it in 1978. His history of the Yoruba, published in 2010, remains a seminar piece on Yoruba history. So, what I will start with would be to have a popular edition that can, you can bring the cost down to everybody to be adopted <coughs> as a reading material for anybody who is interested in Yoruba history, culture, and civilization. That's what Indian people, that's what they do. Popular edition, paperback, newsprint, and so that you can reach the greatest number of people. Yoruba readers today in Nigeria would be about 30 million. That's been by all statistics and data. We should be able to get that talk through popular publication. Today, the topic is war and peace in Yoruba. And I want to approach it from three or four subdivisions. The 19th century perspective, so that when we look at war and peace in Yoruba, The 19th century was a very, very difficult period for the Yorubaris. Our your empire provided stability for the Yoruba nation, regardless of whether you agree with the interpretation of history, as expanded by Samuel Johnson, who was not a professional historian, he was Steve Kudos. To Samuel Johnson. He was a man of history, a witness to history. He was just a missionary, but 
he recorded the events of his time, and some as related to him. The Johnson we see today, or we read today, is not the original Johnson. Johnson completed the manuscript in 1897, and the manuscript got lost in the process. He took the effort of his younger brother, Dr. Obadiah Johnson, to go through his rough jotters and jotters, notes in boxes and other documents to rewrite what Johnson had done before. So before the CMS eventually published the work in 1921. Today, many of our historians cannot go beyond Samuel uh, 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 Johnson because history is enacted once and for all. It is not amenable to repeated and persistent observation like what you have in science. Once it is enacted, you cannot recall history characters from their graves to ask them why do you act this way. So that we are recording events today of our own lifetime in diaries, in our uh, private notebooks, in our high parts, that the great thing, men of that generation never had that possibility. Much of what we know today about 19th century Yoruba land, we owe it to Johnson. The early history, you may disagree, but the 19th century phase, all other contributors are just commentators, reinterpretation of Johnson's work. On your empire remains the greatest empire in West African history, not just Nigerian history. If there is anybody who has authority to refer to himself as emperor, that is the Alafi of Oyo. Death, the Almighty, the companion of the gods. The strength of Oyo lies not in its diplomacy, but its military might. Between the 16th century up to the uh, uh, death of Allah in Abiyodun, the Rubana knew peace. After the death of Allah in Abiyodun, the rulership of Oyo fell into incompetent hands. And eventually, Aule became the Alafi. And Aule was a man of weak character. What happened to Aule? was that by 1796, Aule committed suicide. From the suicide of Aule in 1796 to the 1886 peace treaty, the Yoruba people did not know peace. From 1886 to 1893, when another peace was enacted, the Yoruba people did not know peace. Even when other parts have been pacified or subjugated. There are still pockets of warfare in other parts of Yoruba land. In 1892, Ekpe provided a secret map for the invasion of Ijebodi. Ekpe today had its own share of problems in the 19th century during the time of Kosoko, kingship also in Lagos. British intervention, and a pet today is a divided community. You have a Kwekwe and a Jewekwe. You have the Oloja of Kwekwe in the past. You have the Ulu of uh, 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 So the two monarchs today have found ways of accommodating themselves. But in terms of numerical strength, you have the Ekwe, the Kwekwe being dominant in terms of population. Uh, 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 the influence greatly Ekwe politics. But in terms of influence, the Ekwe 
people have their own subtle way of also determining the politics of the Quebec. But what Epe did in 1892 is still living in the memory of the Jehovah, the Aujai. 1895, Ojo itself was bombarded to military submission by the, uh, by the British forces. And until 1903, Ilefe did not forgive nor forget the role that Mother Kete played throughout that century in alliance with Ibadan. And consequently, only Olubushi Adilekan, only Adilekan, Olubushi the best, broke Mother Kete down in 2007. So when you see Bongo on today, I see Odeumu, you have the greatest number of Mother Kete people. So when you are dealing with Modakeke people in Modakeke, I believe that that is the element you are dealing with. No, you find them in Modakeke, in, in all the world, you find them in Hong Kong. And even the villages, the settlements in that past, because they are on your elements. If what we have just, in the summary, what I have just done, is an executive summary of the challenge that the Rubala faced in the 19th century along a particular axis. Although itself had its own challenges during the period too, Oyo, the master of facts and diplomacy, by 1835, Whatever remained of old or young departed from it through military witness, through poor leadership, and poor vision. The last war that the Alapin fought at that time was known to history as a little war, which Alapin conducted in alliance with the king of Borogu, the king of Niki, and so on and so forth. But Ibadan was already imagined as a successor state today. The man Ibadan around 1835 was an Oyo prince from the Bashan family of Oyo. They were migrated to Ibadan. That person was he was then a prince. The man in in New York, the prince in New York, was Akma. And the king in Ede then was Tiri. Bangai Ajenju. They were triumvirate. Uluyoli Atiba. Bangai. The other have been pledged to deal with the three of them if the war against them, if, 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 if the little war was successful. The moment that knowledge, that information got the knowledge of those three uh, young talks, those were the people who sacrificed Alafi in 1835, 1836. When Professor Akito was here, he tried as much as possible, maybe he don't want to name names. Those are the people who gave the Yoruba nation away at that time. The part of the ruins of Odoyo, three major power centers emerge. One, Ibado. Two, Abeokuta. Three, Ijayi. The three power centers at the time had their notion of the kind of society they wanted. 
if at all, respected even its own enemy. If the person proved to be a man of courage, a warrior by excellence. In the 19th century battle, if a battle warrior had the opportunity of killing the enemy, he would spare the life that, yes, you are great warriors who will meet the king. But Ibadan was not a place at the time for weakness. It was meant for adventurers, men who are looking for excellence, men who wanted to succeed, who wanted a place in the sun. Ibadan prided itself in republicanism. And that is one major problem that Ibadan had with other parts of Ibadan at that time. Ibadan lack respect for crown kings. Ibadan believed that every man was born equal and if you could succeed, if you have the power, the wisdom, the sagacity, the courage, you are welcome to Ibadan. My family house is in Ibadan and that's Marco, Ita, Dioma, Ojaba, very close to Ita, Kuri, very close to it, I got king. That's our own ancestral woman. The greatest military ruler of, of Eden in the 19th century was the Miyabibu Lagunju. He died in... Uh, 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 his, uh, he was buried at Badukun or Shudinok. That's the family house. To keep track, of that discussion, the earlier role will come in much later. In Abel Kuta, what they have is what is called mini, uh, confederalism, military confederalism. Abel Kuta, when you look at the do in Ibadoya, that's the original site of the Barbara. That's the original site of the Barbara. By the time Ibadan was being more people, being settled, the Ife element was the dominant power under Balogun Maya. But at this stage, the man grew past the Oyo element and other people revolted against them, against him in the Banam War. And from the Banam War, the Bible showed itself that look for us to be reckoned with. So, what we call the Bible was only established in 1829. They pushed the Bible here, there, to Abel Duma, and the Bible people moved to Abel Kuta. When you see the people talking about their history, you just, as a historian, you don't want to tap into the politics of ownership. Just keep silent, let them write whatever they want to write. You are not a party. The history is an apparatus. It is difficult to lie against history. The whole settlement in Eba, today in Abel Kuta, 1830 settlement, and the history of monarchy in Abel Kuta is known uh, from a low of who got there to Nebodu Bara of Ibarra, Alaki of Aki, uh, and so on and so forth. How the first monarch, the one in March, is known to history. So, for people who are interested in that, go and read Saburi, Biubaku, Eba, and the Amibos. Or you can even read Shulanke, that is the uh, history of Abel Kuta. No, Adi Shape, the history of Abel Kuta which was published not at the Aram. But the first authoritative text, first academic piece on any Yoruba history remains Saburi Yoruba Eba and their neighbors, which was published by London Oswald for Clarendon Press, 1957.